This is an African town called Malindi, located in the coastal region of Kenya. The first time I went to Malindi, I put out a video and you guys were so surprised that this is like literally it's so beautiful and luxurious. It's like a ghost town, it's forgotten, it's in an island and so many cottages and villas are abandoned. I will tell you why. But first, don't forget to like this video, comment, subscribe and share to your friends and family and support this channel on paypal and patreon little italy this is what the locals call this place because many italians immigrated and bought land from the locals and built very beautiful villas which are now abandoned we will tell you why and we'll show you in this video the villas that are really abandoned and left like deserted the villas are centrally located 20 minutes drive from the shopping center the malindi main town cbd from 20 minutes from the airport malindi airport and it's just like beautiful holiday homes and they're just abandoned some are even demolished Raining, guys. Malindi, the dead tourist city. Properties are being destroyed and they are just by the sea. Guys, beachfront properties. Stairs are being destroyed. Look at that stairs. It used to be. The stairs to the resort now it's all broken down malindi the forgotten city let's go in and see what's here okay you can see wow This is so sad. Beach properties just by the beach. Why? Head south. And it's in the Kenyan coastal of Kenya. Kenya is in Africa. And I hope you like this kind of video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And comment if you are from here and I have coconut water. Let's go. A relaxing stroll on sand dunes in Kenya while rocking your favorite pair of shorts you love so much. Sunglasses and a loose t shirt seems a dream far fetched. But Mambrui in Kenyan coast says otherwise. I often had to do a double take to make sure I was in Malindi and not Palamo or Naples. When I tried to nab an empty beach bed by a large palm tree, a waiter came running over to tell me the spot was always reserved for an Italian couple. It has to be said that it felt very peculiar to be there as a black traveler. In one of the town's cafes, I had to raise my hand several times to be noticed. And even from Italians, usually so friendly at home, there was little warmth. And racially political has reared to its head in Malindi, with some coastal communities feeling that Italians get a free pass given how much they own in the town. There has even been anger at times at the impunity Italians are perceived to enjoy with many locals believing believing they are not even investigated if there is crime. The history of Italians in Malindi goes back to the opening of the Italian-run Brogolio Space Center of Kenyan schools. The Ita 
The first Italians to arrive in the town were engineers and scientists who loved what they found. Word soon spread about Malindi's miles of pristine beaches, abundance of seafood, and good-natured inhabitants. By the 1970s, the community began to take shape with many settle settling in Malindi and pursuing opportunities in the tourism industry. They opened hotels, restaurants, built beach villas and became economically integral in the town. First known as the San Marco Equatorial Range, it was developed in the 1960s to launch Italian and other satellites. It started as a partnership between the Italian Space Research Commission and NASA. The town had its heyday in the 1980s and 1990s when tourism boomed and estimates suggest 4,000 Italians live in the town and 30,000 visited annually. Malindi, the ghost town. I'm going to tell you in today's video why Malindi has been deserted by many tourists, especially Italians. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and welcome to my channel. From being visited annually, a shadier side of Malindi also emerged with the allegation that the underage sex trade was rampant, as was the drug trade and even whispers of the Italian mafia's princes. Still, the tropical paradise with its ease of noy flourished until a slump began with Italy's financial crash of 2008. Then terror attacks from, by Somali militants started in Kenya and the kidnapping of a foreign tourist a little further up the coast in 2011 by Somali pirates changed things. Many Italians sold up and left. Far fewer came to visit back. And it's, and it's something that Kenyans there regret despite their occasional grumbles about Italians. Today, Malindi feels like a town that has seen better days and local struggles to ache out a living made worse, made worse by the COVID-19 pandemic. But it is still a blissful place to relax and enjoy if you can visit. And while tucking into a delicious plate of crab linguine, I felt transported back in time, if not place. I managed to sneak in the video because I didn't want to get arrested. I was almost arrested, imagine, at the beach. Because we are at this, I think this is Leopard. This, that is Leopard Beach. No, Leopard Beach, Luxury, whatever. So I think there's a, there's a high prominent someone there. So they came to ask us, why we, what are we doing chilling in the beach? Why do we have, why, what are we shooting? Are we shooting? And just told them we're shooting ourselves. So, but I know if I was white, they wouldn't ask me a thing. I know that for sure. So guys, as we are walking, this is a documentary series as I walk and research why million dollars villas in Malindi have been closed down or abandoned. As you can see behind me, as you can see behind me, there is another property that seems to have been abandoned. It says private property. It's like written 14.5 million. Many Italians are going back to their home country because they are being taxed high in their country. So they're being taxed high in their country and they're being taxed high here. If there's no business, they choose the way they are options and they most of them sell their properties. Is Malindi safe for tourists? While there are confirmed cases of radical extremism reported at the coast, Malindi remains safe. Security is airtight and the environment is conducive for business. There are numerous Italian restaurants, pizzerias, delis and gelatos stores in Malindi. Italian tycoon Macro Vansini owns the Blue Key 
Law Foods Beach Club and the Coral Key. They are exclusive resorts and beach hotels in Malindi. Then there is Italian billionaire Flavio Biotore, ruling tourism in Malindi. Biotore, a former Formula One boss, owns the most exclusive resorts on the Kenyan coast, delivering a high-end opulent experience. British model Naomi Campbell is one of the world celebrities who spent time at Biotore's resorts in the last couple of years. She spent her last holiday in Malidi at the billionaire resort village owned by Biotore, who once who she once dated. She also spent time in the Lion in the Sand Resort, also owned by Beratore. Adding on to the Italian fanfare in Malindi, Naomi Campbell purchased a luxurious villa in Malindi. Is Malindi worth visiting? Malindi is worth a week-long visit, not just for the Italians here, but the beaches and the little-known Mambrui dunes. Mambrui is Kenya's holy grail when it comes to exceptional Tourism. Mambrui is home to the amazing Kola Beach, which is the region's golden beach, amplified by the rare occurrence of sand dunes. A relaxing stroll on, on sand dunes in Kenya while rocking your favorite pair of shorts you love so much, sunglasses and a loose t-shirt seems a dream far-fetched, but Mambrui is Kenyan's coast otherwise. I know you have many questions. How Italians made Malindi a global destination? Or why are they Italians in Malindi? I've tried my best to explain why and so, but I know my English pronunciation is going to be hard for others. So I've left my notes at the end of this video so you can read more and you can read and pause and you can also do your own research. But this is just my research so if you are local in Malindi, let me know what you think about this story or add more on the comment section. I will be replying and reading. I would like to know more from the locals because, you know, the locals always know what's going on in their community. So guys, we've reached the beach. You can see it's behind me. It's Copper Beach. And Vasco da Gama Pila is just... Kadama Pila is just here, but I don't want to go to Oskadagama. It's just a pillar. Reminding me. Oh Lord, guys, this one is, looks like it's abandoned. Guys, looks scary. It's called Kaskazi. Kaskazi. It's Kaskazi. Huh? Kusi. Oh, it's called Kusi in Swahili. Rainy, meaning rainy season. It's June right now, guys. June 2nd. June 2nd or 3rd. It's rainy, May. No. Why do I even see that? Just get the angle up.